Next up, we've got Aaron. Aaron is a Light Bane Brushes brand ambassador. He's going to be talking with us this evening. So, Aaron. Hey, guys. All, here, man. all right. So, yeah, so I'm Aaron Simmons, uh, also known as ELSPI on Instagram, or as a lot of people pronounce it, ELSPI. Um, but uh, so I've, I've been focusing a lot on um, this white silhouette uh, light painting stuff. Um, I really wanted to do a project where I can kind of showcase different people's passions because this is kind of like once I started doing it, um, I wanted I wanted to bring more to it than just a cool image, and I wanted to showcase you know more than just a pose. So um, what I really got into. Okay, I wish. So this is like the first, one of the first silhouette shots I ever did. This is quite a few years back now because I don't have dreads anymore. Um, but I figured the dreads would work great for this because uh, really, I mean, the whole, the, the technique is, I, I like the technique because it's fairly simple for the most part until you start really adding a lot of motion to it. And I'll get into that a little, in a little bit, but um you know, all it took for me was a white bed sheet, a couple flashes, and tripod and camera and some and some lights. And um, I think the first time I ever saw anything like this was from Tim Gamble way back. And because he's often leaves descriptions on how he did it, I saw a white bed sheet. That's all I saw. And I was just like, okay, I need a white bed sheet. Ordered a king size white bed sheet. Just because I don't know why I need to begin, but now I'm happy for it because I have more space to work with the white. Um, some flashes and then, uh, so basically you're shooting in the dark, you hit the shutter open and then uh, for motion stuff, it's a little trickier because you want to time it at the right time. But if you're just posing, you're standing in front of the white sheet you pose, you pop the flash, and what's left is your silhouette. And because everything is so overexposed, the camera can't pick up any more light in the, in, in where the white is. So the only place that the light can kind of fill in is, you know, it's like a coloring book at this point. You just kind of fill it in with the, your own lights, whether it be blades, brushes, it could be any, anything. The only thing you really don't want to use is white, because then it'll just bleed in with the other white. Um, so, I mean, for me, uh, I like to use the fiber optic brushes the most because this is like, I'm just painting this person, but it's all exposed. Now I just get to paint him and I don't really even have to worry about him moving anymore because you're not going to get those, those lines of movement because there's nowhere for that to go. Um, so it's a pretty basic, simple technique, and it's a lot of fun to experiment. You know, we have a, a friend of ours standing behind the other friend. We give him extra arms. With that, you want to be a little smaller than the person in front, obviously. Otherwise, you'll see them sticking out. But, uh, yeah, it's it's simple, and it's a lot of fun, and and uh, it's it's fun to really experiment with and see where you can take it. Like this... This is a funny one too, because right here, these lines right here, that is the palm of my hand covering the lens. Well, I forget what I was trying to do there, but the light bled in and because I'm silhouetted for the most part, my hand bled into that part of that. And I thought that was a really cool part of, of this. And, and another way you can kind of take this, you know, Tim often, I, I haven't seen him do any in a while, I think, but he'll often do kind of like it looks like a double exposure kind of thing. You can, you can do tripod swaps and instead of filling it in with light, you can go and fill it in with some leaf textures, trees, you know, bark and stuff like that. Um, so as simple as it is, it's really easy to, you know, uh, change it up. And which is why I like it so much. This one was an accident. You don't have the, the sheet. If your light is too bright, like you can see, like here, it's 
overexposed and it bleeds in, it will show up in the white sheet. And so this I did edit because it wasn't this clean of a heart, but I did notice the shape of a heart from this bleed out onto the white from this bright, bright blue light I had. And I just, that's why there's that little edge right there. Cause I just kind of overexposed that area just to fully shape it. And that's really the only, I think this is the only photo I, I did anything other than bumping up the whites in post. Cause I use a white bed sheet and sheets are kind of wrinkly. So sometimes you'll see lines from the sheet, but all you got to do is bump that, that white slider up like to 10 and it'll usually very often get rid of it. And the bigger the sheet, the easier it is because the wrinkles tend to happen on the sides more so than in the center. So I can, I can crop this and I don't have to worry about these wrinkles. Fine. <clears throat> but if you want any kind of motion in there or the act of motion, you need a flash. Um, so, yeah, I mean, anything really works for the light as far as filling it in, but different lights give you different textures. This is L wire and some fiber optic. And then, uh, hey, yeah. Hey, th yeah, there's a question. Um, oh. She's asking, uh, what, what power do you have your flash set to? I max max them out. Um, I use because because of the king size bed sheet, it's it's a big spread, and so I have an AD AD two hundred Pro that I, I use for real estate work, and that I I've been using for these now too, and then two other speed lights that are like one one came with a camera kit lens like six years ago, but I did it's it's nice to have an extra boost as bright as you can get. Because the real trick, what I do to start this is I, I set up the white sheet, I put the flash behind it, and then I, I get the camera settings so that the sheet, so I take my shot and I want, well, my goal is to get just a blank white photo from the flash. So I start at F8, ISO 100, you know, bull mode. And then if I need more white light, before any model steps in front of this, if I need more light to get rid of any wrinkles or anything like that, I'm just, you know, opening up the aperture to let's say F5 or, or bumping up the ISO, whatever I need to do to get a almost pure, cause it doesn't have to be, especially on the edges, pure white, but for the most part, as pure white as I can get, the reason I try not to just go crazy overexposed, like crazy open or, or wide is because then any tools I use to fill in the silhouette are going to be super bright as well. So I try to find the most closed I can get the camera with the aperture and the ISO as low and wide as I can get without, uh, with, with the light without while staying as like dark as I can kind of make it. So that way my tools don't over blow out the edges of the model and you kind of lose the shape that you're doing. Aaron, can you physically describe starting at the camera, what it is and what sequence to set this shot up? This one particular? Just this technique. Okay. So you mentioned yeah, Aaron's so, things, but I think that would be useful. Yeah. Oh uh, yeah. So I actually got oh, some pictures here. Um, I don't want to share the other one quite yet. <laughs> oh, that's not it. <laughs> uh, oh, no. <laughs> I mean, you can stop screen sharing for a second. Okay, okay. So here, here's, here's my setup in my, in my studio. So I got my white bed sheet. And I like to have a little space on the edges from the bars like right now this is not how i ideally like it because right here you can see the one of the legs of the stand and that will block the light from hitting down there and you'll see it so i usually like to have an extra bar up here so that there's maybe half a foot before that or you know as wide as i can so that the bars don't get in the way so i don't have to crop in as tight but you can see it's not super flat i mean it's 
got plenty of wrinkles to show up, but the more you expose, have the exposed exposure up on the camera, the more that'll get blown out. You don't really have to worry about it. And this is what's behind. Hey, Aaron, I found a workaround for that. I, um, I actually use white zip ties and uh, just poke little holes in it, like a pinhole. And uh -huh. it, that thing zip tied, so it's nice and tight. Okay. And, uh, you get a lot more out of the sheet. Um, yeah, yeah, because yeah, that's the biggest thing, is the amount you get out of the sheet. Because in the center, yeah. wherever the light is, I mean, what, I'm going to show you guys a shot um, in a little bit that I did with Dan. And Dan had a beast, beast flat, like light, studio light. And so I didn't really have to use, like, I'm using all these because this is all the light I, can, I have that I own. I don't really have any more than this. And they're all speed lights. And I like, I like try to focus on the, the motion and you have to freeze that motion. Because um, after they move, it doesn't really matter what they do. You can tell them to go home and just fill in that light. You know, it doesn't, their movement is no longer an issue, which is another nice thing about this technique, um, especially with new people because sometimes it gets tricky like oh you're not you, you can't move and now the shot's ruined so, you know like how many times has that happened probably everyone on this page has experienced that um so yeah so this is behind the sheet and it's just three flashes pointing up and then and then yeah that's the front and because talk about the sequence of what lights you're doing in what order maybe so, yeah, so the first thing I'm doing is the I'm, I'm centering my model and then we're getting the pose or whatever we're about to do. And then if she's not, if it's not a motion shot, she's going to get in her pose. Lights are going to be off. I'm going to hit the shutter and then I'm going to pop that flash. And then depending on if I want to paint her with a fiber optic brush, per se, uh, I'll have her stay there. That way... I can paint her body and maybe some of her clothes might show up with skin or, or it, you don't really have to guess where you're painting anymore. But other times, especially with bigger like light blades and stuff like that, I can tell her to tell them to just, you know, uh, walk out of the frame and just paint in front of the, the camera until I think I've lit up most of the silhouette. A lot of times I try to avoid the face that so there's a little bit of you know character uh, going on, but it doesn't really have to be like that. Um, like this, you know, there's you know, no face and it's okay, but her arms still got some skin color, skin tone to it, whereas this one doesn't. Um, so if they stay there, it's easy to know where to fill in that light. And if they walk away, you have a guesstimate and it'll work because you don't have to worry too much about bleeding lights as long as your painting light is not too bright um, and you can do a couple things to deal with that one to have the camera further away from the from the the wall and everything so that it takes longer for that light to hit the, the camera which will make it easier or you can lower the brightness um, so uh, the other thing too with these is so like here you can kind of see the, the color of the guitar my, the color of my shirt and my hands um but then here I've, it's it was pretty much blacked out and it was just entirely a silhouette so if you step a little further away from the white sheet um you won't have as much bounce back coming around in front of you so it'll be more of a silhouette. This is also the same thing with if you dim or if you lower your aperture, but then you'll have the issue of the sheet showing up, like the wrinkles in the sheet, if you're working with the sheet or something like that. If you don't have wrinkles, then you're good. Step further away from the wall or from the, from the backdrop and you'll get more of a silhouette than you will, uh, you know, colors, colors of the actual model showing up. Um, yeah, that's great stuff, man. So yeah, so I mean, hey, bring, show them the kick flip. You got to bring up. Yeah, the I'm flip. trying to get there. And yeah, so I was looking for models, or not even models, just people with a passion that wanted to showcase something they're passionate about in a in a in this kind of form. And uh, I just. 
couldn't get too many people. A lot of it was uh, just reschedules and flakes and this and that. So I was like, you know what? I'm just going to do all my passions. So that's why I had the guitar or the bass and the snowboard. And these are all me. And these, I was just trying to think of a pose that would work well. And I think these came out great. Another tip for this is one thing I like to do for this very soft colored look is I'll, I'll walk up to the, I'll go right up to the lens of the camera with like three fiber optics from the fiber optic brush, just three. And I'll just wiggle it around, right? Like this is the lens, right in front of the lens. So it's just diffused and out of focus. And that's why it's so soft, but because you only have like three strands of that fiber optic brush, it's not very bright. So it's not blasting through the edge of the edge of my silhouette and blending in with the overexposed the rest of the area that's overexposed and so so this one was fun and tricky um i wanted to do something a little bit more than a pose and get some some action in there so brought out the skateboard and i was trying to do tricks on it while popping a flash behind me which is really tricky to time because you're in motion and trying to guess when you're at your peak height in the air um, with the skateboard. And it, it took quite a few shots, especially because you don't, at, at first I didn't even realize like my camera's just too high and that's why I couldn't get my skateboard even in the thing. And I was like, all right, all right. Pulled it back a little bit, lowered it. And uh, yeah, so I- not, not to mention landing on a wheeled skateboard in the dark with the flash that just went into your eyes. True. Yeah. But to be fair, I have moon mats under under my studio on my studio floor. So it was it's kind of like doing tricks in the grass. That's kind of what it felt like. But that's just my own luck of having that there. <laughs> it was still really tricky though. And I I will say I did not land this. <laughs> uh I fell afterwards, but I had the shot. <laughs> and so I came in, I used three, maybe three strands of fiber optic, really, really close to the lens and just kind of filled it in, flooded it around, right all around the front of the lens um, or the inside of that lens so that I knew that my silhouette was, you know, filled out. And then I stepped back to where I did the ollie and I took that same fiber optic brush and I gave some strokes around so that I had some different texture material and that's what you see here with the, with the light blue streaks and the, and the red streaks here that are that are sharper than um a lot of the like dots here you see. Hey, hey aaron something cool to try man um so i've been i like to play around with the old coken lenses the you know the the different kind of effects that they i don't know if you've seen the creative series that they put out um they've got one where you can black out half of the uh the frame it'd be cool to do like a uh i've been looking for something like that yeah, and, I've been looking. I'll, send, I'll send you what it looks like, but it's uh, I got something here in my studio that works okay. for that. Uh, yeah, yeah, I would like to see that. Um, so yeah, I mean, this is the same thing. I I, I had this live side, live side, and uh, I just tossed it in the air and and again took a couple shots to guess when I think it's going to be floated, like be at the right time to pop that flash. Um, and then once I did, I just just color like a coloring book that you can't color out of the lines in, like legit. Once you get that 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 silhouette, it's the rest is pretty simple as long as you don't overexpose the edges and bleed bleed it into the white. Unless you might want to do that. Um, this is another one that was a really cool idea. My friends were having a baby, and I had them send me a sonogram of the baby, and we taped it onto her belly, and I popped. The flash and so if i wanted the more silhouette i would have had them step closer to the camera further from the from the white bed sheet but i didn't mind having the skin tones in here it looks very you know personal in the first place and then i colored it with some i i took a fiber optic brush and just kind of brushed the belly with the um the sonogram picture on her uh, to show um the baby you know being in there so that was a cool, like, just spur of the idea thing. I was like, I don't know if this will work, but you guys have to try this. And they're like, yeah. 
And so we came, we were pretty happy with that. And then with Dan, so a couple of days ago, I had me and Dan were talking because I couldn't find, you know, models to work with. He's like, well, if you need help, let me know. And I was like, what do you got? What are you passionate about? He's like, well, you know, light painting. I was like, other than light painting. <laughs> and he said cards. So I was like, you know, let's get some cards and throw them all around and make some sort of card shot. So he already had everything which is great we had giant cards and some smaller cards and we had two friends with us sylvia and i think he's roommate now right now david. Yeah, david david and so david and, and sylvia are on the sides with a ton of cards he's sit, sitting here posing and i got a couple of cards in my hands and we we're trying to time tossing the cards into the air and letting them fall over him and popping that flash at the right time it took a lot of shots um to get this right but ultimately i'm super happy with this you know we we i got uh so we have cards just falling over some some of them exposed and then get touched with light and others did so that's why they're purple and got streaks coming through them because the the white light you, you can't see where the streaks were but i'm just fapping around all over the place guessing like I think this card's here, you know? Um, and so I did a little bit of the soft defocused light and then some extra sharper strand fiber optics. This is all just fiber optic, the black fiber optic brush, a white bed sheet, an awesome flash of dance, but you can do this with any flash. You just have to figure out your, start with the flash maxed out and work your camera settings to getting a, just a straight blink white picture. And then from there, you can set your model up in front of it and uh, get, get to work. And from there, the, the best, the most thing to be conscious of is the power of your flashlight that you're using to fill these in. So I think there's another one of these that we're in here that I really like too, yeah. So this one was a fluke. We It was accidental, but I ended up liking it a lot too because um, I accidentally hit the flash twice. That's why you actually see this double line here. And it didn't really give the same effect of somebody moving as much as not white backdrops because I'm still overexposing everything. Um, and yeah, I just, I double exposed it and it still came out, or double, I double flashed it and I think it still came out really awesome. Um, so there's, there's a lot more, I guess, give with these than with traditional light painting. You don't have to worry about ruining a shot as much. You're like, oh no, the flashlight fell up, the universe of the connector fell open and the flashlight came out in the middle of the picture because everything's over, already overexposed. So I, that's why hey, I think- uh, Aaron, do you do you have uh, do you have any tutorials or anything? Any links? Uh, I'm working on a I'm working on making a tutorial video for these uh, as we speak. I have some videos. I just and and I have plenty of pictures now. Um, I just gotta stitch it all together and and put some I guess writing. Yeah, that'd be back great music. stuff. Man. That'll be coming in the next week. I want to say. Yeah, because I got I got I pretty much got all the material I need to, to make it now. So I just need to stitch it all together. Um, but I've been planning to do that for a while. I wanted to start this in the beginning of the year and then I broke my collarbone and I was out for a month. And then uh, and then I started doing a little bit more February looking for models to get this going for the tutorial and I just couldn't get anybody. So I was like, I'm gonna just do it myself. So, right. so it'll be coming very, very soon this month for sure. Um, does, does anybody have any questions for Aaron? Well, that's, that's great, man. It's a great presentation. It's a great technique. Um, I mean, there's, there's a lot of possibilities here for some real interesting stuff and you do this very well. So thank you. Uh, yeah. Love, love to see a tutorial put together, man. This is uh, this is really, really some good stuff. How do I get back to the full screen? <laughs> um, Stop sharing. All right. 
Wait, wait. Pause share, stop sharing. Not new share. Sorry, I'm I'm a I'm a baby with Zoom. I don't know if I can do it for you on that. Oh, I see it. I see it. I got it. I got it. Cool. Yeah. Well, man, thank you for that so much. That was uh, that was great. And uh, and I'll just ask one more time if anybody you know wants to ask you anything or if uh, if if you think of something you know here in a minute, just put it throw it in the chat there. Yeah. And, yeah. Uh, yeah. So thank you, man. It's it's an awesome. Uh, I would say it, I I wouldn't call this a very advanced light painting technique. So it's an awesome one for people to explore and experiment when they're first getting into it. I mean, all you need is, I, I bought a king size bed sheet from Amazon for like 14 bucks maybe, um, but you don't even need to need the king size sheet. I mean, you can use a white pillow if you wanna just use your hand. Whatever the size of the model or the thing you wanna shoot, just that's the size of the white. And again, it doesn't have to be a bed sheet and it doesn't have to be a flash. You can use a white wall and a flashlight behind it and just paint it in and overexpose everything behind whatever you're doing. But if you want to have motion, like freeze frame of motion, you need the flash. Good deal. All right, man. Well, thank you so much for that. That was, that was great.